So this morning when I came out here to sit down and drink my coffee, I looked at my email and was surprised to find one from our friends at Vi Two Way Radios announcing the launch of the Ocean KG-1000G Plus mobile GMRS radio. <sighs> Normally, I don't get very hyped up about these things. However, the KG-1000G is one of the greatest and best selling GMRS mobile radios of all time. So an improved version, it's gonna make some news and I wanna get out ahead of it. Also, I don't see anybody else making a video about it right now, so it's a perfect time to strike. By Two Way Radios initially launched the KG-1000G back in December of 2020, and it was novel in the fact that it was the first Part 95 certified 50 watt mobile GMRS radio to behave more in line with the features that one would expect from a high value ham radio. These features included things like a 1000 frequency and tone combination storage bank, tone scanning, weather radio monitoring, VHF and UHF frequency monitoring, and of course the super heterodyne construction. So if it was such an amazing radio, why do they need to improve it and make a plus model? Well, there were some things that, because I believe it was derived from the KG-UV980P quad band mobile two-way radio, some of the functionality made more sense to someone with a mind for ham radio versus a person who had just come into the GMRS world with no previous experience. By two-way radios even acknowledged this in their release by saying that, quote, some amateur features remained in the menu even though they weren't useful for GMRS users, and some button and function names were somewhat cryptic and difficult to understand without a manual. On the outward physical side of the radio chassis itself, they've made a few changes. The first one of the changes they address is on the face of the radio where you had four physical buttons. In the original, these buttons were A, B, and C plus a lock button. The A, B, C buttons were programmable to different PF key functions while the lock button was just fixed as a lock. They've since replaced that lock button with a D button on the plus model which can be programmed to any of the PF key functions, including lock, giving you more customizability and control over your radio. They've also changed the band button on the front of the panel and renamed it to area. A weather icon has also been added to this area button because a lot of people didn't realize that long pressing that button would activate the weather monitoring mode, so they've added a visual indicator so you know. By Two Way Radios also claim some improvements in the actual audio quality of the radio. They don't really stipulate as to what they've done to make it better, but they do say that there is a noticeable improvement in the transmit audio. I personally don't have a sharp enough ear for these kind of things, but our buddy Nate up in Payson, who we talk to all the time on the 575 repeater, can tell the sound of a KG-1000G keying up over the radio anytime and can actually identify it immediately. He says it has something to do with the audio starting really low when a person first starts using the radio, then building as they start to use it more and more. I would be interested to see if this is one of the improvements they are specifically talking about. They've also renamed and reordered a lot of the menu options. They claim that they've attempted to group items in a way that makes more sense and name items more consistently with what they've developed on the newer Ocean handheld GMRS radios. They've also added newer menu options for several of the functions that were only available as programmable keys. Examples include work mode, TDR, channel add, and transmit power. They've also added some menu options that were previously only accessible in the programming software like DTMF delay duration and interval features. Keeping in line with making the focus more towards GMRS and getting away from its ham radio roots, the offset menu has been removed and the SFT-D menu label has been changed to repeater. This includes options for on and off. With offset being standard on all GMRS repeater channels, this was kind of a moot point to have in there and confused a few people. They've also streamlined the process around the priority channel, which can now be set using the new PRI-Save menu option, which allows you to set the priority channel to the currently active channel, and it is also available as a PF key option. The priority channel can also be quickly accessed using the new PRI-SEL menu option. In the past, some users found it cumbersome to switch to the priority channel after hearing activity. Speaking of priority scan, in the original KG-1000G, if priority scan was enabled and the radio detected activity on that priority channel, it would feed you that activity, even if it meant interrupting your current active reception. The priority scan menu now includes a few options. Before, where it was just off or on, you now get the choice of off, on always and on standby. 
The on standby option means that the priority scan is only active when the area setting is on standby, so it won't interrupt an active conversation. There's also mention of a real-time squelch adjustment. Apparently changing the squelch option now adjusts the squelch in real time instead of first requiring you to save the menu option, listen, then go back if you didn't get it right. This will definitely be beneficial when you're trying to dial in a distant station. Streamlining on the navigation side now includes some improvements to make them work more like the Ocean handheld GMRS radios. For instance, when you press exit while editing a menu item, you'll now return to the menu prior to that instead of exiting the menus completely. Weather mode can now also be accessed on either the A or B side of the KG-1000G+. In the past, you've only been able to look up those weather stations on the A side of the receiver. Also, now you can press arrow keys during the scan mode to change the direction of the scan. They've also updated the display now to remove the dash indicator that showed up when you were listening to a listen-only frequency. They've also added an indicator to display when the weather station mode is active. On the programming software side, they've included an area message field, which essentially allows you to add an eight-character message on whichever side of the TDR is set to off. So you could put your GMRS call sign in there, just in case you might forget it. Finally, the programmable function key options have been expanded and streamlined. Before, there were limited options for specific programmable keys. For instance, you could only program certain functions into the hand mic and certain functions onto the bass plate. Well, that's gone now, and you can assign any available option to any available key. As I've mentioned before, they changed some of the wording to make more sense to a person without a ham radio background when setting those keys, but they've also added more key functions as well. These functions include reverse, priority select, priority save, priority scan, weather, wide and narrow band select, and the lock button. One thing that's been grossly overlooked here and is sure to elicit a bunch of pushback in the comments section, wait for it. There's been no mention of an adjustable dimmer for the faceplate display. Ah, many, 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 many people have commented and chimed in on my original review of the KG-1000G to let their feelings be known that they felt that that display should have been dimmable. And because I don't see any mention of it here, I'm gonna say that they didn't do that. To follow up actually here with a little caveat in real time, uh, in the time since I wrote the copy for this review that we're talking about right now, I actually got a comment from a viewer uh, and he said he's actually reached out to by Two Way Direct, spoke with them on the phone and they have said that they were unable to change that because that is a specific hardware detail that just wasn't able to be fixed in the radio. So it's unfortunate. It's not gonna change, it's not ever gonna change, I think, in any iteration of the KG-1000G, which frustrates more than a few people. I understand that. The KG-1000G Plus is slated to ship in the same packaging and same box as the original KG-1000G and includes all the same accessories like the microphone and mounting hardware. It does, however, retail at a price $20 higher than the original KG-1000G Plus. It doesn't appear like they're planning to discontinue the original KG-1000G as the Buy Two Way Radio's website indicates it's currently out of stock but will be coming back into stock soon. Current retail pricing for the original is $369.99. Pricing for the Plus model is shown as $389.99. Is it worth $20 more? Well, that's hard to say. I would say that with the Plus model currently being in stock and available to order, and the original not, uh, well, because it's the only one available at the moment, I'd go with it and spend the extra money. Also, I think if you were looking for your first version of this radio, it's worth it to spend that $20 and get the more streamlined approach because likely you're going to be someone with less familiarity in the GMRS world and you'd benefit from that streamlined approach. Also, the flexibility that comes with those different programming features would be nice. Do I think you should go out and buy this radio if you already have the original? Well, only if you're dissatisfied with the original or find that the improvements that were made on the Plus model are just the things you've been screaming about since you bought that radio and have wanted to see those improvements made. Otherwise, if you're happy with the radio, I'd say just keep it. That is, unless you talk on the 575 and Nate gives you a whole rash of shit every time you key up.
but again, we're gonna have to get our hands on one to listen to it to find out if it's really that different. So Danny, if you're watching this, you got my address, buddy. Till next time, I'm Matt Kester, be good.